In this video, I'm going to be giving you some thoughts on base defenses in Madden 21, what it really means, how to use it, and what you can learn uh, just from kind of some basic football theory. And uh, I'm actually really, really excited to talk a little bit about this with you guys today because I think that oftentimes when we talk about defense, we think about a couple things. We think about nano blitzes. We think about um, pressure schemes. We think about coverage schemes. We think about you know, stopping bunch versus stopping tight versus stopping spread. And I'm actually really excited to talk to you about kind of a, a cover four uh, style of defense that I think you're going to really like. Now, if you've never met me before, my name is Cody, and my channel is devoted, and I mean devoted, to helping you become a, the best Madden player that you can be. Uh, we try to share the latest tips and strategies in the community every single day here on my YouTube channel, both on offense and on defense. And so if you haven't subscribed yet, it's completely free to subscribe. And it just lets you stay up to date with those tips and strategies as they come out. Now, again, uh, what I want to talk about today is a little bit more of a conceptual video, but you will be able to walk away from this video tangibly with a defensive system that I think will be very helpful to you. Now, this is actually kind of a little bit of an excerpt from my nickel 335 wide uh, defensive guide. If you haven't gotten the defensive guide, it's available in the description. It's a great place to really just kind of build your defense. It will give you everything that you need to know to be able to play the best defense you possibly can play in this game. And so if you haven't gotten that yet, I want to encourage you to check that out. I'm going to leave a link to that uh, defensive guide in the description. Now, uh, what we want to talk about today is we want to talk about field coverage. And the way we're going to do that is through using my personal favorite way to do zone drops, which is going to be 30 yard cloud flats. We're going to put our curl flats on 10 and we're going to put our uh, hook curls on five. Now this is going to be talking a little bit about base defensive styles. And to illustrate this best, we are going to be utilizing the nickel 335 wide cover four show two. If you want to, you can also use the nickel 335 uh, normal cover four drop, okay? And that's kind of, you know, you can do either or, um, and this will still be very effective, okay? So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and sub in some safeties here, just get some, get the best personnel possible on the field. And what I wanna talk about today is field coverage. And so we're gonna start, I'm in the spread playbook, and we're gonna start with um, kind of a traditional look. So, and I wanna break this down again, conceptually. So I want you to hang with me because I really want you to kind of grasp what I'm talking about when I talk about this. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come out in a play like this play sh uh, shakes here from slot offset. Now, if you look at this formation on, as a defensive player, really what you're gonna ask yourself is kind of the same question that I think a lot of match style defenses will be asking. And that is to simply ask the question, where are the vertical threats? Where are the, where are the vertical threats? So if you notice here, I am in what's called a, I believe, I'm, I'm going to probably butcher uh, the personnel grouping, but I believe I'm in, I, I, th I think, I think I'm in 20 personnel, okay? Two running backs, zero tight ends, and three receivers, okay? So as you can see here, this is, this is kind of what that means. It means that, you know, basically I have, you know, three wide receivers across here, and I have two running backs in the backfield. Most split offset formations are like this. Now, if you notice, what we've basically done is we've taken this slot receiver, and obviously he's over here. If I motion this running back out, now I'm in more of a gun spread style of formation, okay? If I audibled, um, if I were to come out in the gun spread, and what I'm gonna do simply is I'm gonna put a tight end here just so that I can audible to some other formations, just so that you can see um, firsthand kind of everything. So I, I think I can go to like a tight end backfield package here, yeah, and I could come out in this. So this will help kind of explain you know everything that I'm talking about. So again, defensively, we're just going to be coming out in that nickel three three five. And what's going to happen here? So again, if, if I move over here to the doubles, you're going to see that this is a formation shift. But it all kind of stems from a two running back, two wide receiver type of set. Now, what you'll notice is, as you can see right here, I have two vertical threats on the left side. I have two vertical threats on the right side. Really. But if you think about it in terms of hash marks, it actually can make even more um, sense. And what I mean by that is if you look at the hash marks on the field, the amount of space that someone can attack is different based off where the ball is. So as you can see here, the ball is on the left side of the field. And so what that means is there's a lot more room to attack on the right side. So if you look at these quarter zones 
uh, from Nickel 335, and I've talked a little bit about this. But if you look at these outside quarter or these this four across defense here, what you're going to notice is that if I wanted to play a specific type of defense to one side of the field, um, I might want to play something like a cover two. Uh, so as you can see right here, what I'm what I'm getting at is there's more field space to attack on the right side than there is on the left side. So what that means is my coverage is going to change based on that. So based off of knowing that, I'm going to say, okay, it's very unlikely that they're going to run a corner route here to the left side. And if they do run a corner route to the left side, um, chances are we're going to have pretty good uh, field coverage. Another thing that's very unlikely is for them to run two verticals to the short side of the field. So let me show you what that could practically look like. So that might look like something like this defense right here. A 30-yard cloud flat with an inside quarter at you know default depth. And then that curl flat at 10 yards. And what you're going to notice is these two vertical routes, this quarter can play both. If I try to throw the square for square receiver, you see that that inside quarter can basically play both. If I click onto him right there, that's an interception. So what I'm proposing to you in this kind of tip breakdown is understanding the threats and understanding the field and based off of those two things to make an educated decision about how you're gonna defend that formation. Okay, and I know that's probably a lot to, to, to unpack and we're gonna unpack it here in just a second. Like I said, if you want to get more detail and you want to get specific setups and plans, I would encourage you to get the defensive guide. Like I said, it's just $15 and it literally walks you through step by step everything. But let's take, for example, um, let's take, let's take it a step further. So let's say we're going to go into a formation like, oh gosh, let's say we're going to go over here to like a trio offset, if I can find it. Uh, gun, gun trio offset, here we go. And I went to a play like this called verticals. Now, even though that I'm even though I'm in a play called verticals, I want to kind of prove a little bit of a point here to you guys, just to show you what's going on. So I'm in that nickel three through five wide cover four show two. Now, if I was actually running this um, as a defense, I might want to base align this, um, especially if I was running it the way that I'm proposing you to run it in this video. Another thing that I would want to do is I'd want to flip the formation because I would always want to have my slot corner on the you know on the side of the field that has the most receivers it's going to give me the most amount of opportunity okay so a defense like i proposed a second ago was to go ahead and just simply and i think i just have to you know snap the ball here but if you take a look what you're going to notice is if i if i'm in a three wide receiver set like a trio offset or a trips tight end um, where there's three wide receivers to one side of the field what i want you to kind of pick up on here just a second is I want you to pick up on how I can defend that left side of the field with just one deep zone, even though there's three receivers over there. So if you watch this really quickly, you're going to see that, again, this is three verticals, and I just want you to watch here. I'm going to hit the square receiver. So if I throw this outside pass through the square, yes, I can hit that, but that's a tight window. It's not an easy throw. All right, It is an open throw, but it's not an, it's not an easy throw. The other thing that I want to hit on is, as you'll see, so again, I'm in that cover four, and let's say, uh, let's just say that I flip this play here, as you can see right here, and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to run two, run a couple of verticals here, so I can motion that running back up and basically create that. So I've got three vertical threats, and I just want you to watch how this plays out. So again, I'm just going to drop that flat zone there, and what you're going to notice is again, that inside quarter is going vertical, right? He's not always there, but right there is a great example of what, I, what I'm anticipating happening, is that click on pick ability on the short side of the field. What this means is we can now divide the field. If you think about it like a quarters defense, you can divide the field into a quarters, uh, into quarters as opposed to halves or thirds. Obviously, um, when we say that we're going to divide the field into a halves, that's cover two, where both safeties are playing deep halves, which means that they are splitting the deep side, of the deep piece of the field into halves. What I'm saying and what I want you to consider is by through using the hash marks and through using where the vertical threats can actually go vertical, that can help make a very informed decision. So let me give you another example of this to kind of help illustrate this even better. So let's talk about compression. So spread is one thing. Compression is a completely different style. Um, it's actually very similar, but there are differences to it. So if I went to bunch here, take a look at this formation right now. 
What you'll notice is that they can only attack me in a couple different vertical points. They can only attack me vertically uh, up the seam on the right hash mark. They can only attack me vertical up the seam on the outside numbers to the left. Now, for example, if they motion this guy to the left, now this has changed the formation. It's no longer bunch, right? It's, it's I think it's like tight slot open or something, right? It's basically now we have two vertical threads to the left and, and two vertical threads to the right. The reason this is significant is this changes how you play defense because now what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, well, there's not really a point, there's really not a purpose to have four people dropping back when they can't get to those points on the field. So what you could also do is you could simply do this. You could put this guy in a deep half or deep, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, not a deep half, a, um, oh gosh, it's escaping me, a cloud flat that's at 35 or at 30 yards, right? And then what you can do, because you know, based off of, uh, based off of the formation, you know kind of where they can go, right? You know that a seam streak is not really that great of an option um, just because of the hash marks. So what we can now do is that we can say, okay, well, we don't want to necessarily not have a deep half zone over there, right? But if we do, we can basically use man coverage. So we can take this guy right here and man him up on that outside receiving threat because we know from our knowledge of gun bunch that they can't get anybody in motion out there other than the circle receiver. So it's the only receiver that we have to worry about. So even if they run a play like this where we're basically sending several people vertical, because we've manned up the one guy that can beat us, and then you can see this quarter coverage is going to play exactly the way it's supposed to, and you're gonna get the SWAT. The reason this is significant is it teaches defense in a little bit of a different light. For example, let me talk about this. Let me come back to this um, little two-back set right here. So let's take this specific coverage right here. There is no reason to have two quarter zones going deep. Why? Because there's not enough vertical threats. They're not going to be able to do anything to us. So rather what we can simply do here is we can just have one deep quarter zone. So as you see here, we're going to put king in the quarter zone, uh, or um, I'm sorry, we're going to put king in the quarter zone, and we've got the left side corner in a cloud flat. And what you're going to notice is if they run that vertical route on the outside, that little go fade, you're going to see that that quarter zone is going to drop back. So really all it comes down to now as far as your, your game planning and, and, and how you're going to defensively you know, master this stuff is you're only going to have quarter zones where there's deep threats. Okay, So for example, um, let's take this right side of the field. So we talked about the left side of the field where we're going to do that. right? We only have one quarter to the left and we have a cloud flat. Now on the right side of the field we have to make a decision. How are we going to defend this? Well, we have one of two options. We can play quarters where we're going to have two uh, vertical people in that position, or we can do another defense that I like to play, which is essentially we can play quarters on the left and we can play halves on the right because of the numbers game. So what, you, what you'll see what we can do now is we can split. We can take this guy right here, Jackson, and we can tell him to split coverage. So he's going to basically go ahead and go into a half, and then you've got Alexander here in the, in the cloud flat. Now what this practically is gonna mean is the only thing that you're gonna to have to really watch out for is a seam streak to the slot. How do you think we're gonna handle that? You guessed it, we're gonna man him up with our hybrid defender here that we could put right in main coverage. So now this coverage right here, completely different than what we devel developed from the bunch, and at the same time, it's actually very similar, right? Because they can't hit us where they want to. In fact, we're going to have great coverage on that post route. That inside quarter is going to do a good job of kind of playing both, depending on what they do route combo-wise. And we're going to be able to play a lot of the field. That's what I'm talking about when I say you do definitely need to craft your coverages for the threats. Now, um, let me talk for a split second here about a spread offense. So we're going to go back to that cover four show two. And really one of the things I want to encourage you to do is whenever you go to this, you always want to use the middle linebacker and you want to wiggle him a little bit so that he doesn't move whenever they audible. But let's talk for a brief moment here about the spread formation. So I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna to try to get over here to the spread. And I wanna share with you, this is kinda of how I created my favorite spread defense in the game. Um, you always have to kinda of start with four verticals and then work from there. Like what if he runs a crossing route or a wheel route or a post route or a corner route or those are some of the things that you have to work through whenever you're building a defense. And those are the things that we work through when we built the 3-3-5 wide defense. 
But if you take a look at this coverage or look at this formation here, again, because we're in a two by two spread, it means that everybody can go vertical. So you might be sitting there saying, well, you've got to have, I mean, you just simply have to have cover four. Well, not exactly, okay, not exactly. You need cover four to the wide side of the field because cover two can't play very solid sound against spread, in my personal opinion, because this is because circle is so far out there. If I were to put um, if I were to put that guy in a cloud flat, what you're gonna notice here is that circle is gonna be open by about 30 yards. I mean you see there it's just wide open on the sideline. It's an easy it's the easiest dot you'll ever throw. He can't get there. He let it because of the space issue. Remember, it's both vertical threat. It's also spacing. So I need to have a deep here and a deep here. Okay, I need to do that unless I wanted to roll the coverage, and I could do that as well. But for right now, we're going to leave it just like this. We're going to play quarters on the right, but on the left side, we don't need that. All we need is halves, and the reason why. Um, the reason why we can split the field into that, even if we're in, even if they're in something like a five wide set, okay, is because no matter what, if they even if they run everyone vertical, as I'm doing on this right here, what you're going to notice is that that half zone can split both. He can split both if they try to throw it inside. That quarter is there, and as you can see, you're going to be able to lock things down. This is the beauty of rolling coverages to match the formational strength to match the field leverage that they have. They simply don't have the room to be able to run two people vertical and expect it to be able to beat one guy. One guy can cover two wide receivers if he's in the right position on the field. And so part of your defense, as you go throughout and, and learn how to stop things like trips tight in, or, you know, I mean, trips tight in would be a great example. Let me, let me try to get over to something very similar to trips tight in for just a moment here. So if I wanted to go to um, this trips tight end, this is why you see a lot of people, what they will do as an offensive strategy is they will flip their trips to the wide side of the field every single time so that they can use the majority of what a trip set you know, would naturally use. So as you'll see right here, I'm gonna go to the same defense. Now you might be saying, well, okay, so they're in trips, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna defend it? What do you, what's your plan? Well, this is, this is in a nutshell my plan. What I'm gonna simply do here is we're gonna leave our quarters, right? We have to, based on the principles in the game of what we discussed with the, with the spread set, we have to keep our quarters because we have to divide the field into quarters. We have to have somebody for the numbers, in this case it's Alexander. We have to have somebody for the hash mark, in this case it's Jackson, Jackson in this situation. But if you look on this left side, we don't need that. In fact, it actually doesn't make any sense whatsoever to have that. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop Nickerson into a cloud flat. And then on this right side, um, we can kind of do whatever we want. You know, if we wanted to, we could shift our D-line this direction. We could drop this guy into a hook, hook zone to take away hitches. And then we could kind of, you know, basically play a coverage like this. This is gonna give us better underneath coverage. The reason that this defense works so well is you will always have a plus one advantage. And you might be saying, well, what happens, Cody, whenever they motion and they do something like this, they motion over. What do you do then? Honestly, you don't even have to do anything. But if you wanted to do something, the most simple thing you have to do is just put that guy in a deep half. And remember, your user responsibility, your user responsibility is right up in the seam area. And as you see, we've taken everything away just with that one little adjustment because the vertical threat has now shifted from the right side to the left side, and we have to adjust to that. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about defending by alignment. So I hope that this video gave a little bit more flesh to some of the defenses that I've been putting out lately and why I truly believe that 335 wide is the best defense because 335 wide is the only defense that truly practic with the exception of 335 normal. 335 wide and 335 normal are the two defenses that in my opinion align the best give you the best opportunity to play this quarter style of defense with the least amount of adjustments, and it gives you the best pressure and the best run defense, in my opinion, in the entire game. So if you wanna learn more about this, as well as the way that you could apply this same principle that I just shared with you today to match coverage and to man coverage, uh, I wanna encourage you to check out the ebook. The full defensive guide is on sale right now for just 15 bucks. 
and literally you will walk away a different player defensively. So I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, you can always feel free to text me. But if you want to get that defensive ebook, it is available in the description.